Thank you for tuning in to Subaru Sleeping with Carson. In this build, we'll be making what I think is going to be the ultimate solo sleeping platform for tall individuals in their Subaru Crosstrek or like SUV crossover or small vehicle. I'm very excited. I'll also be working on the spare tire area. I'm converting it to extra cargo because I have gotten a roof rack, which we'll talk about in another video. And I'll be getting a full size spare and keeping it on the roof rack permanently in the near future. But in this build, I have made my, what I think is going to be the ultimate Subaru solo sleeping platform. Uh, but I've also modified the spare tire area to hold more cargo. Enjoy. Safety disclosure is don't do anything that's dangerous. Don't do anything that I've done. Do everything that you want to do the way you want to do it, not the way I did it. Don't get in trouble. Be safe and wear safety protection. I am going to be working off this platform because I like it a lot. What I don't like are these extra braces I have to carry. I don't know. I just think it's real convoluted and I'd like to change that. You know, I really like the mechanics of how this, you know, front section of the sleeping platform slides into the back section. So I'm definitely going to keep that. I like that there is cargo space underneath the sleeping platform. But what I'd really like to make is a drawer. But I have to contend with this lip that's at the end of the um, cargo area of the Crosstrek. So I need to figure out how high I need to have it. There's not a lot of planning that goes into my builds other than what I've already stated. Uh, there's just a lot of contemplation time, like now, just kind of thinking how I'm going to make this work. You know, kind of changing things around, seeing how high I could actually make it. It's always good to have some extra boards to jam underneath there and, and raise it up. And then just time to think. All right, first things first. I need to figure out... Um, how much I can open this area down here, the least amount I can open it, maybe like a half circle or something, and still be able to have the platform there, but this will determine how long the platform is going to be. I'm also have to contend with um, when the spare tire is out, there's going to be this, um, this open cavity, and um, there's not going to be the tire there to support the platform. I also have to be able to get everything in there and out of there, like this kind of cumbersome uh, come along along with everything else that I um, have as recovery gear. So um, I'm just kind of thinking about things and uh, trying to figure out what a good position is and if, if, you know, if in a half circle I can get this thing out of there and, and put stuff back in there. As I was looking around, I found this. This is the key to the success. I'm going to put a block right above that um, little uh, screw pin that did hold the spare tire in and it will be great support for my newly made platform floor when I make it out of wood. All right, now that that's uh, figured out, let's move on to the platform. I'm going to cut a little notch here so this can fit in perfectly there. And then I'm going to get to sawing. And really, I'm just going to keep sawing for quite some time and doing other measurements. And here's that little workbench I told you about and the clamps. Whew, man, it sure does make things easier. Um, well, we're going to load up that one... Um, uh, little um, drawer I had. I'm going to go ahead and take off those little wings, which I know I did have to make it wide enough for one of my children to sleep on it. But for this build, we're just going to go ahead and take those off. I could always put them back on in the future if I wanted. The other side is going to be 26 inches wide because my um, uh, self-inflating mattress that I use for camping is that wide. Uh, I did my absolute best to mimic the other side of this um, drawer because it clears that lip perfectly and it's really long and this should be pretty much identical to that one so I'm just making the measurements and getting them over to start building it and even though it I'm working off the other one it seems like it should be pretty easy but there always seems to be some <laughs> complication and and um, like uh, one of my viewers said hey can you do a, a build or measurement uh, of one of your previous platforms I said well yeah I'll just I'll just have to go back and disassemble it and remake it again because I don't really like draw up a design and work off of it I just kind of figure it out as I go along um, but I will make measurements for this one at the end just to give anyone watching this any sort of assistance in making your own or um, uh, giving you inspiration to make a different one. Well, apparently I skipped a couple steps because here I am taking out that other drawer and that one doesn't have a floor. And look, it already has a floor in it. So I, I already put one in. So now I'm trying to figure out um, the height to have the floor. It's not really secured yet just kind of clamped in. Um, I'm using those little blocks underneath it for it to sit on. There is a million ways I could have made this thing better. And uh, truth be told, I had to edit it down. There was actually a total of 13 hours of footage making this sleeping platform. I actually made this twice. I made it once and realized that it was too short um, or not high enough and uh, 
the drawer didn't work. It was a mess. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Th this is the build showing the second one. The first one was like solid two by sixes and it was just ginormous. But this one I've left the sides open there so I thought I'd add some little triangle braces. Now let's talk about added support. Uh, when I built this platform, I think I used a uh, half inch plywood when I think it really should have been a full inch. So I added these steel plates I got at Home Depot. I just um, kind of after the fact had to chisel holes and slide them through and I drilled some holes and put some screws in there. They're not moving anywhere and this thing is solid now. Now I'm, I'm seeing here putting in the triangle braces and you know some of them in the end when I got them all um, on there they weren't uh, completely flush. But you know, that's okay. It doesn't have to be completely flush. This is not a show item. Uh, this is just a hobby, making these sleeping platforms. You know, that's what sanders are for. So look, I just sand it down and boom, it's flush now. So now I'm making the measurements for the actual drawer itself. Once I have the measurements, I make a little piece here and I kind of slide it back and forth to make sure that the um, drawer will clear everything in the inside. And then I go ahead and make my cuts and start assembling the drawer itself. As I begin to make the cuts, I uh, check every step along the way. I didn't always do that, but I, of course, have made entire items and then they don't actually work the way I thought they were, so I like to slide them in and out to make sure that it does still, in fact, fit. Well, once I'm sure everything uh, fits and the drawer is ready to be uh, assembled, I just use uh, wood glue made by Gorilla Glue, and then I use my clamps, which are exceedingly helpful and that little workbench to put it on, kind of clean up the excess glue that squeezes out, and then I go ahead and tack in a couple of these little, these little nails just for good measure, though I think the wood glue would probably hold it on its own. It's very strong and dries very quickly. All right, I've already made the other end of the drawer. Now I'm making the last end, which I guess is the front of the drawer, and I'm putting it on here, and then when I get it all uh, glued and nailed together, I end up sliding it into the... Um, a sleeping platform and realizing that it sticks out a little too far. It wasn't so much a mistake as I initially was going to have it stick out that far, but then once I actually stuck it in and realized uh, it is too long, I thought, well, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to go ahead and shave it down a wee bit and um, go from there. You know, the uh, real hilarious thing is after I got it all redone and put it all back together with another end, I uh, stuck it into the sleeping platform and realized it still stuck out a little bit and I had actually not shaved off enough. So I actually uh, went back and recut off some more. <laughs> that was nighttime and now it's another day and look, the drawer fits just fine. Now, when putting this drawer handle on, I don't know what I was thinking. I added this little piece because I didn't want the screws to come out the other end, which I end up taking this off later and just cutting the screw tips off on the other end, so I don't know what was going on. So this is really cool. I have this little board that I put in and it allows me to slide in this drawer and be able to get it in a lot smoother. The other drawer just goes in first and then the left hand side goes in second. Uh, but here it is. Here's the front portion of the, um, the platform. Now, see what I'm putting on here? It's a cantilever in with no braces. Boom. This thing about drove me crazy trying to figure out how to make it work. But this thing is definitely really long. Here are the measurements. Take it in, pause it, take a screenshot, whatever you'd like. But here are the drawers. And see the little asterisk next to the 8.5? That's because if you got down and actually looked straight at the drawer, there's there'd be a gap. That's because the drawer is slightly shorter than 8.5 eight inches. Um, because it has to clear those little metal things I added. And the reason the right-hand drawer is shorter than the left-hand drawer is because of that cantilever front of the platform, how it kind of scissor locks together. Um, there's boards that have to kind of go way into the next platform and kind of hold it together. And uh, the mechanics of that just doesn't allow for the right-hand drawer to be any longer than it is. I'm sorry I didn't show making this little wooden box to hold these uh, water uh, dispensers, but it worked out really well. I'm making my final measurements. I have it hanging over just a little bit so I can fill up um, pots and cups and stuff like that. But it will hold three two-gallon water dispensers. So I'll have them in the car. That'll be six gallons. I'll also maybe carry a two-gallon uh, backup, but that'll be enough for cooking and drinking and everything like that. All in all, it worked out. 
It's plenty wide for my um, little mattresses. I also have a little extra room on the side by that water box. The cantilever in here, I couldn't be more happy. It was kind of complicated to make, but I'll try to make some measurements in the end to make it not complicated for you. It was a total of 75 inches long, which is my height. It packed up really well and fits in the garage or wherever it would need to be, I think, very um, compactly. Okay, so the cantilever end just sits right here on the platform when it's not being used. I did end up using a strap here, and I did test it out, and it seemed very secure, but I do determine a better way to store it later uh, in my process and in this video. All right, on to the spare tire area build. So I initially used this butcher paper and some tape to try to make the contour of the end of the cargo area. I really have no idea why I made it so convoluted. I should have just taken the panel floor area that comes with the car out and just traced it on a piece of plywood. Actually, I end up taking it out anyway and laying it on top of this piece of plywood because it just wasn't cut exactly right and I shave off a little bit more. Then I lay it in the car and make sure that it fits. Um, I have to make sure that I can still open the area um, where the, uh, it turns out where the sleeping platform is going to sit. Uh, it would be sitting right on top of this opening, so I have to shave off a little bit more. Lay it in there, looks good now. Now I'm gonna start actually making the backside of the, um, the floor. I cut out little notches, or little humps in there and stuff like that, but you just keep going, keep shaving off a little bit more here and there before you know it, it's all in there. This block and that little pin I talked about earlier that screws in that initially would have held down the uh, spare tire on the inside um, really was imperative to making this functional and structurally strong. So the block sits on top of that little pin and it, um, right there, you see the pin right in the middle? The block sits on top of the pin, you screw the pin to the right, adjusted height, you can still access everything in there and it is extremely strong on the other side, it's not going anywhere. Um, the front side is a little uh, weak, but I'm not going to be putting anything on the front side. It's just for opening, and uh, you know it all it all turned out really well. Now um, the screws came through a little bit, a little pointy there, so I'm just going to take a little grinder and grind this off, and then we're going to get to the next day where we'll be uh, sanding everything down and prepping it to be stained. On a different day, not shown here for whatever reason, probably because it was dark or. I just forgot to film it. I actually used wood putty and went around all the areas that um, had blemishes or screw holes or anything like that and tried to fill everything the best I could. For the first time ever, instead of just using coarse sandpaper, I'm actually going to use coarse sandpaper and then uh, like fine sandpaper and then super fine sandpaper um, so I can try to get uh, the surface of this wood as smooth as possible. When I was done, it, it was it was crazy how smooth it was. I mean, I know there's the saying, as smooth as silk, but, I mean, it was smoother than silk, I think. I mean, it, it was the smoothest. I wish there was some way I could describe it better, but it was so smooth when I was finished with it. Um, and then I moved on to um, applying. I actually bought a, a stain and polyurethane uh, mix. Um, and after I get done sanding everything, I um, do apply that. Later, I go back and add another layer of polyurethane just to make it all super smooth and um, uh, it just looks kind of like glistening wet all the time but it's really smooth. I chose to do this this time instead of covering it with carpet. I think this will be easier to take care of um, than the carpet which tends to get kind of dusty and messy um, after camping trips. All right now we're to the staining section of the build and uh, I just got these um, kind of sections of uh, tarps and laid them down. Uh, I wiped everything down initially, but then I also, um, based on the, the stain instructions, it said to get some mineral spirits and, and wipe everything, all the surfaces down with the mineral spirits to just make sure that all the dust and dirt or whatever could possibly be on it is uh, completely removed. So here's me wiping everything down with the mineral spirits. And then again, I, um, I, begin, uh, or I begin using the stain slash uh, polyurethane which was a great combo um it not only stained it but then it it kind of it, it just makes this like really hard kind of shell on the outside but it's super smooth and you know it really worked out great i would recommend this uh the polyurethane stain combo again i, I go back later and add more polyurethane just because i'm addicted to this uh <laughs> this glossy finish and just how smooth it is and there was a couple little you know indentions which I filled in later and, and just made it just 
just super smooth, but it came out uh, dark like this, and um, I think uh, I really like it. And now we're just putting the hardware back on the drawer here. That little that little kind of crack along the top, I think it's because when I initially built this drawer, I didn't have a full piece of wood, so I kind of combined two pieces, but whatever. So here I am. I took off that little ridiculous block I put in there, and then I put some screws in, and you know what? They go straight through to the other side, and I used my Dremel, which, boy, that Dremel sure has been handy through all my builds, and I use it to uh, cut the other sides of the screws off, and it, it works out great. Why I didn't do this in the beginning, I have no idea. I could have made it a little cleaner, but, you know, who cares? Um, I think it turned out, and I'm fine with how it looks. It's a drawer. It's the inside of the drawer. Anyway, so we're loading everything up now, um, putting it all in the car, the drawers, and um, here is that little area under here, and here's this block that I was telling you about. I mean, it really works great. This is a 2x6 block. I put it in there. You just screw that little pin to where you need the height to be, and it is super strong where the uh, platforms would lay. I did put some uh, canvas in there from an old sign just so you know it would prevent maybe rattling uh, that stuff around. But everything, including the actual mechanics, uh, the little, um, uh, you know, the jack and the little thing you use to raise the car up and everything like that, um, I, I put it all in there. So it all fits, and I was able to put it all in and take it all out. So here is uh, the platform. It looks great. It was just standard plywood. And that stain really brought out all the cool grains. And again, here's this cantilever in, which I absolutely love. And I'll do my best to describe how I made it so you could perhaps make it yourself. I came up with um, a different way to secure the, the top, the cantilever in when it's sitting on the platform, is I just ran some screw bolts kind of uh, through here. And they just, um, with little wing nuts, they just are secured to the back platform. So with it turned around the other way, I'm able to uh, put a little cooler here and it, it all worked out great. Uh, this this drawer, I don't really know what I'm gonna put in it yet. I do know that underneath it on the right hand side are those little reflectix and this is a little uh, a little container I got for you know washing the one dish and one pot I have when I um, uh, go camping. I have this little compact table that I actually set my Coleman stove on and uh, this little stool I use for camping, and that all slides in a little, a little nook on the left-hand side. This is, again, this drawer. I've, I added one of these dividers in a previous build, but I added two more this time so I could put in some more items. Again, this is the Coleman stove. It fits in great. I have a little camp towel uh, for drying everything off. I have this uh, one pan, um, cook pan, which um, I think is going to work out great. I haven't used it yet, but it looks good, and it's a pan. I'm sure it will work fine. I have a little uh, measuring cup there, and then before I go on camping trips, I'll grind some coffee for that little coffee press um, slash cup I have there, and then I also have um, maybe for some tea or if I want to just pour it in the cup or drinking water, I have a little cup there, and I got a little uh, wooden spoon for mixing everything, and although I'm not going to be using you know four canisters of this propane that goes into the uh, Coleman stove, I just wanted to show you that four of them will in fact fit right here. I also have this high-strength uh, ceramic um, camping bowl, which I'll use for eating pretty much everything. It fits in there really well. I have, uh, you know, different spoons for, you know, eating and knife and fork and a little salt and pepper shaker, and that will all go in right here next to the bowl. Now, in the back section, um, I initially put this in, but realized it, it won't fit that way. I just need to lay it down, but that's actually a little toaster maker, which it works great. Um, I just replaced an old one I had that was real blackened by a kind of a campfire setup. Um, now I'm I'm seeing putting in some cans here just for dimension, but you know I don't know what I'm gonna I'm gonna pack yet. I'll pack it individually for a trip, but there is lots of potential and lots of room to grow. And um, I think this uh, side could really just be for um, the cookery items. And here it is. So here's my two 1.5 inch self-inflating mattresses, my pillow, and my sleeping bag. All right, getting my shoes off and whatnot was sped up, but this is in fact real time right now. This is actually happening, or it was when I was recording it, but I have not sped it up. This is me, a six foot three individual, getting into the back of a Subaru Crosstrek and trying to uh, get myself into um, the uh, sleeping bag. I'm I'm holding the sleeping bag and occasionally the mats because they do have a tendency to kind of slide with me, so. It, there's a little bit of finagling. I know some people may be watching this and they might be saying, heck no, this is completely crazy. You're loony, man. I'm never going to be sliding into a you know, proverbial coffin. Um, but, you know, I, it's comfortable. It was a comfortable coffin. No, I mean, it's it's a 
it's a close, you know, it's a close fit, a tight fit. You know, if you're claustrophobic, this, you'll probably have a panic attack. But I'm not, and I like it. And again, um, the point of this whole channel is just to show people that um, there are options and you can modify it. You could lower the whole thing a couple inches and, and it would be, um, you know, just right for you. But again, this works for me. I'm enjoying it. This is my platform and and this is Super Sleeping with Carson and I'm Carson. So I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm getting situated here. I will admit it, you know, it takes a little while to get situated, but once I am, I um, lay here for just uh, one moment and just so you can see what it looks like me sleeping in the car. And then I'm going to uh, close the hatch. Now, I have really long arms, and um, but if you don't, you can maybe attach a little strap or something to the back of the hatch so you can get it closed without having to get completely out of the sleeping bag um, in order to reach the hatch. I also had a button installed inside my hatch. I love it. Um, it is really helpful when getting out of the back of the car. I didn't install it. I did watch a YouTube video and sent that YouTube video to a friend who's good with electronics and he installed it. It took all of 15 minutes, so it looks definitely easy, but you just need someone who understands, you know, wires and, and whatnot. All right, so here's me then getting back out of the car with the button. Again, very good. You know, I tried sleeping the opposite way on the sleeping platform, which is possible, but because of its height, there's really no easy way to get out of any of the other doors except the hatch, so that's why I'm sleeping this way. It's also easier to get into the car and into a sleeping bag through the hatch, so this is what I've decided to do. But again, if you lower the platform or modify it in some way, you can get in any way you like. Um, it is always hard to get out a little bit with the, everything wants to kind of follow you out of the car, but that's all right. And um, and when I'm actually out, there's, there's actually room to sit on the platform. I even stand up a little bit here. I'm standing on the inner lip. I wouldn't actually stand on the outside part of the bumper. It may actually tear off, but um, I keep all my glasses and wallet and keys and whatnot in my shoes here and then I'm uh, just gonna put them on and then hop out and we're gonna get on to actually explaining the best I can um, the measurements of the um, sleeping platform and the cantilever end and the mechanics of it so you can make one of your own or modify it and make anything you want. Okay hopefully you can gleam something from this video pause it where you'd like and take something in of the design of this uh, cantilever end. At the um, other side of the platform where it connects to the back side, I used a block of five and a half inches and it slides into the, a box that I made uh, with a two by six and then it latches together uh, right there in the middle. And here's a video of it going together. So again, it just slides in right there. And then I made this little, this slanted brace that fits into this notch. And then uh, the clamps, of course, um, connect everything together. Here's another image with some more um, measurements uh, to help you in your path to creating this platform. Well, as we've come to the end, I'd like to say thanks for watching. Time is the most precious commodity, and once spent, you can never get it back. So thanks for spending some time with me on Subaru Sleeping with Carson.